Now that 2023 is behind us, it's time to review the top five flips of the year. We are going to count down from best to best of the best by starting with number five and going to number one. The number five best flip of the year was actually a Japanese for alligator prime. I actually bought this card back in 2022 and set it aside because I didn't think the condition was good enough for it to get a PSA 10. But earlier in the year, when I was going through my bulk stack of cards, I found it again and I decided to send it anyway. One of the main reasons I decided to send it anyway, because my buy-in price was so low. I bought this Japanese for alligator prime for $8.29. And it looked relatively clean enough that even if it got an eight or nine, I was still probably going to make a little bit of money after selling the card. But luckily and surprisingly, a couple months later, PSA gave the for alligator prime a PSA 10. So my all in cost was $23.29 and I sold the card for $470. And after eBay took all their fees out, I profited $383 on this one one card that was just chilling in my bulk pot. The number four best flip is a Raquaza Delta Species card. I absolutely love the artwork on this card. This is a part of a big mid-era Japanese purchase that I did at the end of 2022, and I sent all the cards into PSA, hoping for really good grades. This was a card in particular that I didn't think had a chance, again, at a PSA 10, but PSA once again surprised me and gave it a gem mint 10. It's weird, you know how when you're listening to music and a song comes on and it transports you back to a place where where you were when you first heard the song or where you listened to the song the most. I was in a hotel room in Kyoto when I got the email that my PSA grades were available. And when looking through all of the grades, I got a ton of tens in that submission, but this card in particular stood out as the major highlight when I was scrolling through those cards. And I remember being in that hotel room, looking through the PSA grades that very day in Kyoto. I was all in on this card for $58.93 and I sold this card for $650. That means after all the eBay fees were taken out, I profited $490 on this one card. Number three on the top five flips list is the eBay vault. I made a video recently going into all the details and all the benefits of using the eBay vault, but one of the main benefits is that there's 0% fees when selling through the vault right now. That is going to change to a 3% buyer's premium that the buyer will have to pay purchasing items from the vault. But for the period at the end of the year last year, it was 0% selling fees on items over $250. And one of the plays I was specifically doing at the end of last year was buying 25th anniversary Charizards. One of the reasons why I bought those Charizards is that they had a 90 some percent gem rate and their PSA 10 price was between $250 and $300 at the time. But that meant that those cards were eligible after being graded PSA 10 to go straight to the eBay vault for sale. And I would incur zero selling fees after selling the item. So in December, I sold three of those Charizards profiting just over over $200. But that's not all with the eBay vault. I also sold two black label Gengar character rares through the eBay vault, both profiting over $280 a piece. So the total profit of items sold through the eBay vault was around $770. And that transitions us and that transition tra transitions transitions and that transitions us fuck I can't say the word. And that transitions us smoothly into number 2, which is BGS black labels. I sent off my very first BGS submission this year just to try and snipe a few black labels and we were lucky enough to get four black labels in my first ever BGS submission. Three of those were Gengar character rares and one of them was an Umbreon VMAX. After I received the cards back from BGS I sent them straight away to the eBay vault so that I could uh, avoid those selling fees and in the last two months of the year we sold all three of the Gengar character rare black labels. Each of those Gengar character rares only cost me $4 and it was only $18 to grade them with BGS. So I was all in for only $22 on each of these cards. The three Gengar character rare black labels sold for $300, $310, and $299 respectively. So if you add up all of the profits of those cards so far, it comes out to $835 profit on those three cards. Black labels are on another level. And last but not least, the number one flip of 2023 were my collection purchases. I purchased two major collections at the beginning of 2023. One of them was a $10,000 collection with a near complete Watsi set all the way from base 
to E-Series era. It was insane. And on top of that, there were 30 Fire Red Leaf Green packs and 13 Team Rocket Returns packs in the collection itself. The second collection I bought was a $4,500 Japanese old back binder. An almost near complete set again from base all the way through the Watsi eras, including some of the more niche Japanese series like Misaki promos, vending series, quick starter decks, it was insane. Such an amazing Japanese vintage binder. Not only were these collections just super fun to sort through and grade cards from, it benefited my YouTube channel because I was able to send a bunch of cards off for grading and make PSA and CGC returns. It also benefited my consignment space up at the comic book shop because I was able to take a lot of the cards from that $10,000 collection and sell them up there, really kickstart the binders up there with a large collection of vintage English. I got to learn about pack grading. I opened a heavy Team Rocket Returns pack. I opened a heavy Fire Red Leaf Green pack. It was just loads of fun. I had so much fun with both of those collections this year. And not only that, I made a ton of money on both of those collections this year. On the $10,000 collection, and this does not include any cards that were sold up at the consignment space at the comic book shop, which is going to be a lot. This doesn't include any of those cards at all. This is only cards that I graded and packs. For the $10,000 collection, we profited so far because I still have cards to sell from this collection, but we profited $8,537 so far. Absolutely insane. Most of the value in that collection was from those sealed packs. Luckily, I was able to sell all of my remaining light packs to one company at a Collecticon this year, and I reached out later to that same company and sold them all my heavies as well. And then on the $4,500 binder collection i still have a bunch of those cards laying around as well including almost full sets of vending almost full sets of the quick starter set a full set of tropical island like we've got loads of cards from this binder still to sell but the ones that i was able to grade and get back and sell we have profited on the four thousand five hundred dollar collection so far $1,878. Both of these collections provided great learning experiences for me. They were loads of fun, provided so much content for the channel. They were amazing. I hope that I can buy some great collections this year that even rival these collections from last year. Last but not least, we do have one honorable mention. I was recording this video, looking through my spreadsheet, and I realized that I made a ton of money on Master Ball Reverse Hollows from Pokemon 151. And we need to talk about that before we wrap this video. Shortly after 151 released, a lot of people were talking about the Master Ball Reverses. I think it's a great little concept. Basically, a lot of the cards had regular Reverse Hollows, which were Pokeball, but you had one chance per booster box to pull one of those reverse hollows as a master ball variant. In a set with over 100 unique reverse hollow cards, to only have a chance at one master ball per box meant that it was gonna be pretty difficult to pull one specific master ball reverse hollow of a specific species. A lot of the more extremely popular Pokemon species were already really expensive out of the gate. But what I decided to do was I decided to look at Pokemon like Arcanine, Gyarados, Charmander, Bulbasaur, Squirtle, Wartortle, Dragonair, some of the really popular Pokemon that weren't gonna be at the forefront of people's minds. And for about a week or two after Pokemon 151 came out, I would buy up the Master Ball Reverses of those species if they hit below $10. When all these Master Ball Reverses came in from Bai, I immediately sent them out to CGC, and CGC gave so many of them pristine 10s. I probably had between an 80 and 90% pristine 10 rate. And I actually brought all of those pristine 10 Master Balls to Collecticon, and and I didn't sell a single one, but when I got them back and threw them all up on eBay, they sold like hotcakes. And at the end of the day, after selling all of my Master Ball reverses, I profited over $1,500 on the Master Ball Reverse Hollows that I purchased. It probably should have been number two, but I was too far into recording this video to realize it, so it's gonna be an honorable mention. The Master Ball Reverse Hollows killed it for me. Well, that is it for me. I hope you all had a very successful year as well, and good luck to everyone going into 2024. I hope we all grow our businesses even more.